And then I caught a glimpse of those legs, hundreds of thousands of rigid, bony legs rose out of the hole, scraping and clawing the ground for leverage. Larger than a public boss, beads of sweat trickled down my forehead, the color draining from my face. Eyes upon eyes where such features should not reasonably be. Eyes so horribly massive they eclipsed the eyes of the largest known species on this planet. Its pale, gelatinous mass bubbled to the surface resembling a disgusting, pus-filled pimple and its abdomen. Good God, its abdomen. It was shaped like some overgrown olive with eyes bulging all over every surface of its great body. The God of the labyrinth towered over me with his unholy glory. My blood ran cold and I was at a loss for words. My heart moved in an abnormal, hypnotizing motion, swaying back and forth with nary a bone to be found on its gelatinous build. I immediately understood what Narcissa meant when she said she had eyes throughout the world. The multi-legged abominations labyrinth expanded across the globe, granting it the illusion of being omnipresent. At any time, some hapless sap could end up lost in the cavernous walls and encounter this old one. It unnerved me how easy it was. Narcissa cackled, her smile becoming more twisted. I have done what you have requested of me, my god. Please, bestow me with your blessings. I heart shifted its many eyeballs to what I assume was his chest. It spoke with the same gravely gurgled voice its offspring shared. Its voice was not what I was expecting for a creature as huge as a boulder. Its tone was distant, bizarrely cordial. Despite its terribleness, the pale god was patient, and speakably so. I'm afraid you misunderstand, mortal. Your time as my high priest has reached an unfortunate end. Narcissus's eyes widened in horror. But, my lord, have I not faithfully served you for centuries? I have provided you with the best sacrifices to meet your quota. You are such an insignificant, incompetent waste of filth. Something shifted within Ihort's indescribable mass and stretch and twisted indefinitely into itself forming a colossal fist. You have forgotten your place. Human, you may have an extended life in comparison to the rest of your kind, but you also forget who it is who can take it away. Narcissa clasped her hands together in deep prayer. No, I hort, please. I am sorry for speaking out of turn. Please, let me serve you for eternity. I will kill whoever I have to in your name if you just. Without warning, Narcissa keeled forward grimacing, her eyes bulged upon the realization of what was happening to her. Dozens of Iort's brood squirmed and wriggled from within her body ruffling her outer skin. She clutched her midsection between her arms letting rip a haunting, agony-filled moan. Yet, no matter how much she begged, her desperation fell on deaf ears. Narcissus's face contorted into a twisted scowl, with ludicrous tears streaming down. No, my lord. A deathly cough started to choke her out. Gagging profusely, streams of white, spindly critters wriggled free. Her eyes disintegrated as the insidious creatures chewed their way out. Her sobs of pain transitioned to wet squelches and tearing of flesh. The brood slashed their way through her lungs and turned them to slush along with her other vital organs. Narcissus, once glamorous, flawless skin bubbled and popped as thousands of spawn made a mad dash. Even her skeleton dissolved into more nutrients for the hungry infants. Within three agonizing moments, Narcissa was gone. All that was left of her were her favorite dress and ear piercings. I struggled to breathe, 
after being born to witness Narcissus suffer a form of divine punishment. However, I faced the horrific reality that I was now alone with her murderer. My heart's arm twisted and shifted, moving from one side of his body to the other as if he was contemplating when an appropriate time was to drop its mass on me. Its myriads of eyes settled on me. Even without the old one talking, I knew how lowly he thought of me. Fear not, my dear human. I shall give you an offer, and I am certain that you will not choose poorly. Everything that I thought I knew disappeared in an instant. We, as humans, were so convinced of our place in the universe, but there existed things, horrible, reality-breaking things, things that no one of sound mind should fathom or search for truly existed. We are but a speck of dust in the grand scheme of things, and the old ones thirst for release. You will just eat my brood. Otherwise, I have no further use for you. My lips were dry. I did not know what I should say at that moment. My options were limited considerably. Should I agree and allow Ihort to gestate me with his offspring, I didn't think I would be getting off that easily judging by what happened to Narcissa. But seeing that titanic fist hovering above me, swinging back and forth like a pendulum, was also a situation I wanted to avoid at all costs. Unless you wish to become my chosen. Chosen, my mind worked into overdrive to comprehend the offer. That must have been what Narcissa was, if so. If that entails sacrificing the life of someone else for my own safety was not only an irredeemable act, but also very cowardly. After mulling it over, I came to a decision. I think I know what I want. 